Hi, welcome to this talk about mutation testing. First, a little introduction that I'll try to keep it short because 15 minutes is quite short. So uh, I'm Nicola Frankel. I'm a um, developer, consultant, architect, what have you. Um, I also do uh, some teachings and trainings. I'm obviously a speaker. I keep two blogs, one which is more Java-oriented and the other which is um, Vardin-oriented. Uh, I also wrote two books about Vardin, which of course I encourage you to check. And um, I am in the process of writing a book about integration testing. So, um, for the subject at end, it's about mutation testing. And the context is the following. You write tests because you want to check your production, production code's quality. But how can you assert your testing code's quality. And basically, I've noticed some problems. The first is you rely on code coverage, and you will say, hey, guys, notice that my code coverage is higher than yours, so my testing code is better. The problem with that is that code coverage is a metric, and any metric can be gained. So, code coverage can be gained. I find myself in the situation to have such kind of tests. Whatever the test that is, you can always forget the assert. But still, since we are using cut coverage as the best metric there is, you've got 100% cut coverage. Too bad. So how to fix that? With standard testing, you've got this guy, Reverend Striker, for those who know, who's a comics geek. You run the test, it works, that's good. With mutation testing, you do the same. But out of your standard test, you create mutants. And when you create those mutants, you will run the test and check the results. And basically, you can have two options. You run the test, the test fails. Or you run the test, the test works. Basically, in the first case, you killed the mutant, which is good. It's like the X-Men. Let's kill all mutants. In the second case, the mutant survived. And it should tell you that something is very fishy about it, because if you change the production code and the test still pass, there must be some problem. So mutation is very simple. Basically, above, you've got your production code, and below, you've got your mutated code, and the mutation is just changing the plus by a minus. So you know about mutation testing now. The only thing that we need is, what do we do with that? In Java, there is a nice little project called PIT, and it um, advertises itself as a real-world mutation testing tool. It's integrated with Maven, with Ant, with the command line, with uh, what have you. And it provides you with many, many available mutators. So it will replace plus by minus, it will change uh, the boundaries, it will replace stuff with null, and really wreck a work with your production code while you, were, you are running tests. Um, I believe that a little demo is in order. So basically, my tests um, is very... I got... This class, which obviously is quite simple. There is no class. Oh, thanks. Of course, I checked just before, but I have to check again. Better this way? OK, thanks. So here is a class. Um, and this class is obviously very simple. It's just checked for a limit. And if I go beyond the limit, uh, uh, below the limit, I return true. Otherwise, I return false. My first test is, like I said, 
there is test code, but I just forget about the assertions. And so I will run pit. It does its job and it creates reports. And by creating reports, it tells me very interesting stuff. And the stuff is the following, is that my line coverage is 100%, which means if I only check cut coverage, I'm the king of the world. But my mutation coverage is 0%, because here you see that nothing was asserted. OK, but it doesn't happen very often that you um, do it willingly. Probably you forgot about doing the assert, but it can happen. So um, let's uh, do a real a better test. And now I've got which I call an untrustable test. And now you can see that I've added the assertions. If I do the same stuff, running pit, my report seems much better. Of course, now I still have 100% cut coverage, but Everyone does see what Pete still finds something fishy with my code. Why? Because here I didn't try to game the metric. I really asserted something. And the little magic lies in this threshold. Because as you can see here, Pitt replaced the lower than by lower and equals. So the tests are still passing. So I didn't try to cover everything, but really Pitt tells me, hey, you forgot to test the threshold. The final test The final test should be the right one. So here is complete. We test the threshold. <coughs> and if I run pit for the last time, and check the reports, I finally have 100% mutation coverage. And so this is the right metric. This you can rely on. This can be trusted. Because formerly, we had all three times we had 100% cut coverage. But the first time, it, was, it couldn't be trusted. So, just a few tips, because now that you understand why PITS and the benefits it can have, uh, mutation testing does take time, of course, because the mutations um, that have to be produced out of your source code, that take time to generate. And then every mutation has to be tested to get the same taste. So, there are a couple of tips. The first is, at first, you probably are better testing only specific critical sections of your code base. The second is to limit the number of mutators that are used. Basically, PIT provides you many, many, but you can configure it to only use a few. And to limit the number of mu mutations per class. If you are, I hope you are uh, doing continuous integration, um, it's also better not to run PIT at every commit. So just you could 
handle mutation testing like you handle integration testing. Integration testing takes time, and you probably don't want to run it at every commit. There are also um, some stuff worth mentioning that PIT creates reports, as I just showed you. So probably you will need to create a verify goal um, to check that the report um, is adapted to your needs. And you might want to fail the build if, if it uh, doesn't fit what you, the quality we want. Um, there is also the guy who introduced me to uh, mutation testing uh, created a, a nice sonar plugin. So you don't even have uh, to use uh, the, the, the Maven uh, stuff. Um, I think that's good. Any questions about mutation testing and PIT? Yes, please. So the question is if it does work on multiple frameworks. As you can see, and I will show you, the POM is very easy. So I just have to add the pittest maven. And then from this point on, for example, I used testng because I think that testng is far better, but the example that you find in the doc has WebG unit, so you don't care about the testing framework, as long as the testing framework works with Maven. Yep. How does it integrate in uh, your IDE? Uh, can you get the feedback from the coverage? Uh, the right now, the only integration I know of is Maven, and Ant, and the command line. So, no, there is no integration with your ID yet. And I don't think it will be feasible. It would be easily feasible because I, I told you it takes time to generate all mutants and pass the tests again. So, but you're welcome to try. Yeah. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand, and you... You say it takes time, but can't you do it on a small... Uh, on a single unit, unit uh, test. Running the Pi test? Yeah, of course. As I told you, you can configure to run only on a specific portion of your test. So you can restrict the portion to only one single test. Other questions? Yeah, there is an interface, you can extend it. But um, I'm not an expert on mutation testing, but what is provided out of the box, basically, pff, you really don't need any more. Probably, if you just try running a pit against your existing code base with the existing mutators, you will find so many holes in your code, you won't need to uh, create uh, other mutators. Yeah, you can restrict the number of the number of tests that are run. So you can configure everything. Yeah, but is it possible to choose randomly? To choose randomly? Uh, I don't know about that. That means your test tests randomly turn red or green. Yeah. yeah. That scary. That's pretty much my point. Other questions? Okay, thanks for your attention. Bye.